Hello everyone. So, uh, welcome back in your own channel. And in this video, I would tell you the next example regarding FCFS algorithm. Right? So, in case of this, you just check the another example for FCFS where, where the total number of processes which are given is 3. Right? So, three number of processes are given over here. That is P1, P2 and P3. Right? Where the arrival time and execution time is already given. Okay? So, as you could check that the arrival time for process P1 is 0, for process P2 is 3, for process P3 the arrival time is 5. Right? And the execution time is already given. That is 2, 1 and 3. Right? Respectively. After that, like what you have to do? With the help of FCFS algorithm, you have to find the completion time. Okay. You have to find out the completion time. This is the first thing which you have to do. Then the other thing is you have to find out the average turnaround time. And the third thing is average waiting time. Okay. So, if you want to find out the completion time, then first of all, in case of FCFS, we have to draw the gain chart as I have told you in the previous video, right? So, without making the gain chart, we can't write the completion time, right? So, the first thing which you have to do is you have to draw the gain chart, right? So, what do you do? You just draw the gain chart. So, how we could do that? This is the main thing. Like, how to draw the gain chart? So, our process, like which process is being started first of all. So, process number P1 is arriving at 0th quantum of time, right? So, in the gain chart, we would write process P1. And it is arriving at 0th quantum of time. And how much execution time it is just taking? It is taking 2 quantum of time. That means 0 till 2. Okay? 0 till 2. Like our process number P2, P1 would be executed and it would be finished. Right? After that, we are having process number P2, which is arriving at like third quantum of time. Right? Which is arriving at third quantum of time. But you could check that our process number P1 is at second, uh, like uh, is at twoth quantum of time. Right? That means. That means, like, between 2 to 3, the CPU would be idle, right? Between, like, 2 to 3, the CPU would remain idle, right? CPU would be sit idly over here, right? Why? Because till then, till then, there is no process which has been arrived. That is why. That is why the CPU is idle, right? Because our process number P2, as the FCFS says, that like one by one, the process will be executed, right? But for that purpose as well, the process must be arrived, right? So, like our process is arriving after the gap of some time, right? So, till then, we are just drawing over here. That is the CPU's ideal till then, right? After that, like for one quantum of time, it is ideal. After that, at third quantum of time, the process number P2 has been arrived, right? The process number P2 has been arrived. So, now we would write over here that is process P2, right? And how much execution time it is just taking? That is 1. So, it would be 3 plus 1 means 4, right? Now, you just check that at fourth quantum of time, how many processes has been arrived and how many processes are ready in the like are waiting in a ready queue right so you just check process number p3 has been arriving at fifth quantum of time right but right now right now we are in fourth quantum of time that means now the cpu would sit idly right the cpu would sit idly for one quantum of time till five till five right now, as soon as our time would be reached, right, then we would, we would write P3 over here, right. 
because P3 is arriving at fifth quantum of time. So that is why, that is why we would draw that process number P3 is arriving at fifth quantum of time, right? And how much execution time it is taking? The process number P3 is taking the execution time that is 6, that is 6. So it would be like 5 plus 6, that would be 11, that would be 11. Okay, that would be 11. Now, you could check that, like, uh, you could write the completion time over here, right? So, completion time for process P1 is 2, okay? And the completion time for process P2 is 4. The completion time for process P3 is 11, right? So, this is how, like, we have written the completion time. Right? Now what do you have to do? You have to find out the turnaround time. Right? So already I have told you that what is the formula for turnaround time. Right? So how we just find out the turnaround time? By subtracting our arrival time from the completion time. Right? So our completion time for process P1. You just check. The completion time for process P1 is 2 right minus the arrival time so it would be 2 minus 0 it would be 2 minus 0 that means 2 that means 2 right then the process number p2 the tat would be 4 minus 3 so it would be 1 then the turnaround time for process number p3 so it would be 11 minus 5 that means 6 so this is what? This is the turnaround time, right? So you could write the turnaround time. Uh, like the turnaround time we have just got for uh, different, different processes. Now in the question it is given that find out the average turnaround time, right? So to finding out the average turnaround time, what do you have to do? We have to write down the like different different arrival time which we like the different different turnaround time which we have just get for Different, different processes so that means it would be 2 plus 1 plus 6 divided by 3 so it would be 9 divided by 3 that means 3 microseconds that means the average turnaround time is 3 microsecond right so this is our second uh, thing which we have to find out then the next uh, thing which we have to find out is the average waiting time, right? So, like for that purpose, we must find out the waiting time for different different processes, right? So, first of all, we would uh, like find out the waiting time for process number P1. That for how much time the process number P1 was waiting in a ready queue, right? In a ready queue for how much time? The different number of processes are waiting, right? So this is known as the waiting time. So process number P1, the like formula for this is turnaround time minus execution time. So TAT, that means 2 minus execution time. So it would be 2 minus 2, that would be 0, right? Then 1 minus 1, it would be 0. Means there is no waiting time for process number P2. Okay. Then the third for the third process, the waiting time is the turnaround time for process P3, that is 6, minus the execution time of process P3, that is again 6. So it would be 6 minus 6. That means 0. Right? So that means we could say the average waiting time for process number, like for all the processes, would be like the average waiting time equals to 0 plus 0 plus 0 divided by 3. So it would be 0 microsecond. Right? So this is how you could find out the like average turnaround time as well as average waiting time for the other example. Right? Or for some other processes using FCFS algorithm. Right? Hope you have understood in a very well manner. So, now just do practice of it. 
until then thank you thank you so much so